Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Hobby Hussy. Today I'll show you how to make a sculpted 3D tongue tumbler. And this is how we do it. We start out with a double walled tumbler. We sand it or strip it and then we paint it with a flat black spray paint. Let that dry and then you Mod Podge the cup. Use a thin layer of Mod Podge. And then we add the glitter. And make sure that the glitter gets on every piece of the cup. And this cup is a little oddly shaped at the top. It kind of goes back in. So it's a little hard to get the glitter on, but I think I got it. And I always save my excess glitter. I hope everyone is doing the same. Let that dry completely. And here I am putting on just random little spots of glitter, different colors, just to give the cup a little bit of color. And you can do whatever you want here. This was supposed to be kind of a galaxy cup, but it didn't quite turn out. But I, I still liked it, so I kept it. But you can do whatever you want. You can leave it all black if you want to. And this black is really sparkly and really pretty even after the epoxy. When that's done, let it dry completely and then mix up the epoxy. And I have mixed 20 cc's of each side, side A and side B, and I'm not going nearly this fast. The film is sped up quite a bit, but empty out side A and side B into the cup, and then you stir it for about three minutes to make sure it's all stirred. Make sure you scrape the sides and stir the bottom. You put the cup on the turner and you epoxy the cup. And I'm using a cotted finger here because gloves are getting hard to come by in this pandemic, but I've got plenty of these finger cots, they're called. And believe it or not, I did not get any epoxy on any of my other fingers. Once you have it epoxied, you let it turn for four hours. I found this can of pineapples. It's about 14 ounces, I think. And I took the label off and I used this can because it is about the same diameter as my cup. Now I've put a thing of foil over it, a couple of sheets of foil. And then I'm putting clay on both sides of it to kind of stabilize it. And now I'm sculpting the teeth. First, so I take a little white log of clay and I use Primo clay and you flatten the log and then you put indentations of where the teeth are going to be. And then you kind of start sculpting your teeth and teeth are not a straight across on the bottom as you think they are. So make sure you indent just a little bit between the teeth. And then on the front, you indent a little bit too, because teeth are not all one piece. They'll look like they're all one piece if you don't make these uh, dents in the middle, in between the teeth. <laughs> it can't talk. But keep sculpting until you're happy with your teeth. And then you take a red log of clay, and it's a little thicker at the top than it is on the sides but you kind of push it into a lip shape. And you're also pushing it onto the can. 
and that indentation needs to be right in the middle of the teeth. So they line up because that's the middle of the lip. You want it right in line with the middle of the teeth. And that is the Cupid's bow at the top. You kind of got to keep it in line as well. And this is a spoon tool that I'm using to sculpt with. And I'm making sure that they are formed properly with the spoon tool because you want it to be kind of two humps here where the lip is at the very top. And you can do that with the spoon tool. And I use my hands a lot when I'm sculpting. They come in very handy. <laughs> now I'm contouring the teeth and contouring the lips as I go. I'm shaping the lips and the teeth with the spoon tool. And this is an eye tool or a lacing tool, some people call it. And I'm making the lines in the lips so it looks kind of like the lips are more puckered with that. And then I come back in and contour each line with the spoon tool so it's not just an indentation. It's kind of a contoured shape to the lip instead of just lines. And make sure you contour on both sides of the lips. You want the entire lip to be shaped, not just the top, not just the bottom, because you want this to actually look like an upper lip when it's on the cup. And this is the lower lip, and it, again, is a red log. And right there in the middle of the lower lip, it's kind of flatter than the other part of the lip because the tongue is going to be over that. And I don't want the tongue to stick out too far. But you kind of seam the two lips together with the tool, kind of mash the clay together. And here I am making some lines in the lips again and contouring. Got to make your lips very shapely here. And here is the tongue. This part was a little bit creepy for me. It actually felt like a real tongue. But you make the top of the tongue kind of straight. And then you put it up against the teeth and you're like mashing the top of the tongue almost under the teeth. You want it to look like the tongue is under the teeth, but you don't really want to put the tongue under the teeth because that would make it too bulky. And now I am contouring the tongue and trying to shape it how I want it and make it more three dimensional. And um, I forgot what this tool is called. I call it my eraser tool. But it makes a very good um, valley and not just a, you know, straight up and down cut into the tongue. But I love this tool. And now you just kind of look around and see what needs to be pushed here and pushed there and do it because you want it to be three dimensional and correct from all sides. You can look at it from the top and the bottom and see what you think and push anything where it needs to go. That's the beauty of clay. It's not set in stone until you cure it. And my lips, where they came together, I decided I need to actually make them more one piece because they kind of look like two pieces of clay there. But just keep sculpting, keep smoothing. And use any tool that you need to 
get it done. Your hands, your eraser tool, your spin tool, your lacing tool, whatever you need. Here I'm adding some more detail to the tongue. And I actually think that the more detail, the better. So anything you can think of that would make it more detailed, go ahead and do it. And after I finished this, some people on my um, group said that I should have put a tongue ring in here, and I did not even think about that. So. Next time, there's going to be a tongue ring in the tongue, if I ever do another one of these cups. But make sure you contour it to give it a lot of dimension and smooth out any little bumps of clay that you don't want. And I've got a big red dot on the tongue, but I'm going to paint over that anyway, so I'm not real concerned about it. I'm adding some more shape and detail to the lips. And you can go as far as you want to go with the detail. And I thought maybe I should add a little bit more detail. So here I am. But this is just a fun cup that I am wanted to try, so I did. And it got a lot of comments on the groups that I'm in. And a lot of people asked for a tutorial, so I thought I would put it up here. And this is just for fun, and it's just for me. I have not sold a single cup as of yet, and I'm probably not going to ever sell cups. I just like to make them for friends and family. And this is how I get texture on the tongue. This is 40 grit, I think, sandpaper that goes on my belt sander. And I just barely touch the tongue with that. It looks kind of painful, doesn't it? Now I put it in the oven, I put it in a cold oven, and I bake it at 275 degrees for like 15 minutes, I think. And then I turn the oven off and I leave it in for until it cools off. So start with a cold oven and end with a cold oven. And now I am painting the sculpture. Start with the white and paint the teeth white. And I like how it kind of makes it pop when the teeth get a little whiter. The white clay does not stay white in the oven. That's the problem here. So I paint it white when it comes out. And I do the top part white, and then I um, do the underside of the teeth. And then I add a tiny bit of brown to some white. And I do in between the teeth with a thinner, round brush. And that's to give it more dimension, you know, make shadows and light and things kind of pop out at you a little bit. But put the brown in between all of the teeth. And you can also put it right up under the teeth where the tongue is. And that'll help um, make the tongue kind of pop out.
And now I am putting on messy lip gloss, kind of highlighted. And I had a lot of comments on my group saying that I should have just left the lips red and left them alone. And you can do that if you want as well, or you can watch me do this. And you paint the tongue also while you're doing this and put in the highlights and the shadows of the tongue. But mine is just kind of a messy, I just ate a whole cupcake with a lot of frosting kind of look. That's kind of what I was going for. And I used varying shades of pink to kind of highlight and shadow. And I use my fingers here also to blend the paints a little bit better. Not here, but later on. And if you really want it highlighted, then do um, very light colors like this one. It's almost white, just a tiny bit of pink in here. But you can paint the lips whatever color you want, or you can not paint them at all. It is your choice, and you can also make the lips a different color. I've seen some black lips that are pretty cool as well. A very rocker punk look, but that looked pretty neat as well. I think next time I'm going to do a vampire mouth and do some fangs. But this, I think, it turned out pretty cool. I got a lot of really good comments in the groups. But just play with it and do whatever you want. This is art and it's up for interpretation. And it's very individual, so what somebody likes, somebody else doesn't like. So that's just how it goes in the art world. And I am defining the lip lines a little bit more here by painting them in with a darker pink. With a round brush. I don't know what size that is, sorry. But the more you detail, the more you're going to like the final outcome. Here I'm kind of blending it all together so that there's no hard lines. And after it dries, I take it off of the tin can and I put it on the cup. And I find a good position for it. You may have to slide it around a little bit, slide it up or down. But find where it doesn't rock back and forth. And uh, put the clay under the cup so the cup doesn't rock back and forth. Now I'm putting E6000 glue on the back of the mouth. And you put the glue anywhere that the mouth is going to touch the cup. And I don't actually go to the edge with the glue because it will kind of squish out to the edge once you put it on there. But put it on there, smash it on, make sure it has good contact. You can rub it back and forth just a little to kind of seat it in there. But you let this glue cure for 24 hours. Now I am mixing up the epoxy for just the mouth. And I've 5 cc's, so it's 2.5 cc's of each. And I smooth it on with the stick at first just to kind of clean my stick off so I don't waste any epoxy. And now I'm using my fancy makeup application thing that I got from the dollar store for a dollar. But it's made out of silicone and it spreads epoxy very well. 
So I'm putting epoxy all over the lips, the teeth, and the tongue. And the place between the tongue and the lips on either side, I kind of puddle the epoxy in there. It looks pretty cool. When this is done, I let it cure for at least four hours. And now I'm mixing up the epoxy for the entire cup. Uh, 20 cc's of part A and 20 cc's of part B. Mix it up really well. And this is sped up. And I epoxy the entire cup and I'm using my silicone applicator this time. When you're done epoxying, let it turn for four hours. Then turn it off and let it cure overnight. And this is what the end result looks like. That is it. Thank you so much for watching another Hobby Hussy video. Please like and share and subscribe for future videos. Thank you.